Welcome to Beginning Robotics, a series of videos designed to help teach you how to build a better LEGO robot. My name is Roger Bright. I'm the coach of the Mabry LEGO Destroyers. The Destroyers are the first LEGO League team at Mabry Elementary School in Tampa, Florida. Anyone who's ever participated in a game knows that the fun of a game lies in playing it. But before you can play a game, you have to learn what the rules are and how the pieces work. The same holds true for building a LEGO robot. While you may have spent countless hours putting together many LEGO kits, you may not have spent any time figuring out what each piece does or how they work together. That's what this video is about. The most basic element in LEGO building is the brick. No, not that kind of brick. Closer. Okay, I know this is a stretch as far as jokes go, but Newark, New Jersey is always funny, and there aren't that many things that are nicknamed the brick. There it is. This is what most of us think of when we think of a Lego brick. And although almost all of us have played with these at one point or another, there are a lot of things about the Lego brick that you may not know. Most oftentimes, terms such as whoozy what's it's, thingamajig, and the ever popular whatchamacallit are used when trying to describe Lego pieces. For our purposes, however, we will use the terms used by the guys at Lego themselves. As we established before, the whole piece is called the brick. The sides of the brick are the walls, while the little nibs on the top of the brick are called studs. Sorry. We describe a brick by giving a width by length description of the studs. The brick in the top picture, for example, would be a 2x2 two two brick, while this would be a 2x4. All LEGO bricks are made to a uniform ratio of 6 to 5. By understanding exactly what this means, we can build stronger, more complicated robots in shorter periods of time. To do this, we have to know what a ratio is. Put simply, a ratio is a numerical relationship between two related items. If you're comparing one thing with another, and you're using numbers to do it, then odds are you're using a ratio. <laughs> no pun intended. It, 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 it's a pun, you see, because odds are a, a, a type of, of ratio. Oh, forget it. Let's look at our cartoon. Now here our Viking is comparing the number of plunderers to the number of villagers to try and figure out how successful his raid might be. If the village had 100 villagers, and he had only two plunderers, for example, then there would be a ratio of 50 villagers for every plunderer, or 50 to 1. Really bad odds. If there were only 10 villagers, and 100 plunderers, however, then the ratio of villagers to plunderers would only be 1 to 10. Much better odds for our Viking plunderers raid. Now getting back to our Lego pieces we see that the ratio we talked about earlier compares the height of our brick to the width of our brick when they're viewed as a single unit. And that's how we'll be looking at our Legos, not by inches or millimeters, but by units. A Lego unit is the brick we have pictured, square bottom with a single stud on top. Sorry again. As I was saying, a Lego unit has a square bottom with a single stud on top, and the height of the Lego unit compared to the width of the Lego unit is 6 to 5. This brick is the standard height for a brick, but two units wide and four units long. In other words, although it is a single brick, it is actually eight Lego units. But why is any of this important? Okay, maybe that isn't the best reason in the world. Truth be told, it's because of this little guy right here and all of his brothers. This is a Technic brick, a type of Lego brick that can be connected not just top to bottom, but also on the sides where that hole is using plastic pins. Just like regular Legos, these Technic bricks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but they share that same 6 to 5 ratio as any other Lego brick we've talked about. The importance of that side connector can be seen when you consider all of the abuse a competition robot has to endure. Not only is it handled by a bunch of different people, but it must pick objects up, drop them off, bump into walls, go over bumpy terrain, the list goes on. In short, a competition robot has to be strong. Let's look at a simple design like this one. Using nothing but bricks and plates. Okay, it wasn't funny with the bricks. It's not any funnier with the plates. A plate looks just like a brick, but it's thinner. 
to be more exact, the height of three plates equals the height of one brick. Getting back to our original structure, made of bricks and plates, this structure would appear strong. And depending from which direction force is applied, it is. If force were applied directly from the top of the bricks, or straight from the sides, this structure would be strong. It would maintain its integrity. But if any type of torque or twisting force were applied to this structure, it would come apart very easily. So what's our solution? How do we fix this problem? The answer can be found in cross bracing. Here we see a similar structure in both shape and size. This structure has the same strength as the old structure insofar as it's both strong from the top and from the sides. But it has the added benefit of cross bracing which gives it strength not just from the sides and from the top but from any torque that would be applied to it. It's these cross braces applied to the Technic holes that we talked about earlier that give this structure that strength. Okay, hang in there, we're almost done. And to answer our dog's question, yes, we're there. We're now at the point where we can see why that height to width ratio that we talked about earlier is so important when we're designing our Lego robots. In order to use cross bracing, the holes in our structure have to line up with the holes in the braces. But since the height of our brick is bigger than the width of our brick, the holes won't line up. We won't be able to pin the cross brace onto the structure. Because our Legos are uniform, however, we know that the space between the centers of the holes on our Technic bricks are exactly one Lego unit wide. Likewise, we know that when we stack two of our Technic bricks, the distance between the center of each hole is one Lego unit tall. Since we know from our 6 to 5 ratio that our Legos are taller than they are wide, this means that it would take only 5 Lego heights to equal 6 Lego widths, which is exactly what we have here. We can see by measuring the space between the holes that we have 5 Lego unit heights. Likewise, we can see by measuring the space between the holes that we have six Lego unit widths, giving us our six to five ratio. But who wants to use all these Legos when trying to do something as simple as cross bracing? Well, you don't have to, and that's where the plates come in. Here we can see that by adding two plates between two bricks, we can line up the holes between our height and our width perfectly, thus giving us the strength and the cross bracing that we need. We can also use plates to make our spacing uniform. Each of these stacks is the equivalent of four and one-third Lego units high. But the stack of bricks on the right uses plates to distribute the spaces more evenly, and in doing so is able to use an extra pin and increase the strength of the structure. I know this can be a little confusing, so please, if you take nothing else from this lesson, please just take the following three things. Use cross bracing to strengthen your robot. Two plates stacked between two bricks will usually allow you to line your cross brace properly. And lastly, that LEGO Robotics coaches are among the most beautiful people in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will try some of these things the next time you play with your LEGOs.